Hello friends, welcome to Pioneer of Success. We are conducting the series Mathematical Module in ComSol Multiphysics and today's topic of discussion is solving unsteady heat conduction equation with ComSol Multiphysics. So this is the unsteady heat conduction equation and it has both a spatial and temporal coordinates. It is a first order with respect to the temporal variation and second order with respect to both x and y direction. So spatially this is of second order. So this is how you have to tell the nature of the equation. So before we move on to the solution with ComSol multiphysics, let us try to explore the physical significance of this beautiful equation. So this particular video will have two parts. In the first part, we will explore the physical significance because I believe understanding the physical significance is very important if you are dealing with an, with an equation and if you want to know from top to bottom of the equation. So, in order to understand it physically, what I did is I have cut down the equation to one dimension with respect to space and one dimension with respect to time. That is this particular equation. You can see we have omitted the other spatial derivative. We are only considering one dimension with respect to space. And now we will apply fundamental concept of derivative here and that is this del del t. I mean the temperature variation with respect to time is equal to limit t tends to 0 difference operator operating on temperature and difference of time. Similarly, for this second order spatial derivative, what we are doing is the simple concept of limit and derivative we are imparting that is limit x tends to 0. So initially this difference of the first order and the first order derivative is again limit x tends to 0 difference of t and difference of x and as this is a second order derivative we have another difference by this one so by doing simple mathematical or algebraic manipulation we can reach up to this equation that is difference of difference t by delta x and delta x so here i have geometrically defined three points by which we will be trying to understand the physical concept. So we are basically solving in this particular space and if this is a 1D problem, so we will be solving on a particular line, say this particular line along x direction. And on this line, we will be having different points if you are solving numerically and among those different points, I have taken only three points and I have named it as say i minus 1, i and i plus 1 where i is an index. For simplicity, we can also call it 1, 2 and 3 and for simplicity, I have taken the temperature at this point as T1, temperature at this point as T2 and temperature here is T3. Two different situations have been taken for this particular situation you can see the temperature at point 2 is higher than both the adjacent points and herein the temperature at the middle is lower than both the adjacent points. So this is the two different scenarios which I have taken. Now why I have taken these two different scenarios that we will understand shortly. So two things are important here. One is difference of differences. So what is difference? So let us try to understand from geometric point of view. So this is the temperature at point 1 and this is at point 2. So the difference is very simple. This is the difference. So delta T and I write it as delta T left. So delta T L will be coming here and the difference between these two points is this one. So T3 minus T2 here, that is delta T right, T3 minus T2. So one thing we have to understand, whenever we are working with difference operator, 
what we are doing higher index minus lower index so 3 has a higher index so t3 minus t2 it doesn't matter which has higher magnitude of temperature we will only look at higher index minus lower index so this is a convention so now we are clear with few things what is delta t r what is delta t l and what are those like delta t l is your t2 minus t1 and delta t r is t3 minus t2 so difference of this differences is equal to difference at the right hand side because right hand side has higher index minus difference in the left hand side now we'll proceed further you know this difference in the right hand side we have expressed as t3 minus t2 so i am just replacing it similarly difference in the left hand side we are replacing by t2 minus t1 and then again we are manipulating so coming to this particular line so what we are doing so this is nothing but equal to t3 plus t1 you can see this negative and this negative will become this negative and this negative will be positive and it will be positive t1 so t3 plus t1 and it has t2 has negative sign twice so twice t2 now simple algebraic manipulation will be doing let us take two common it is coming outside so it will become t3 plus t1 by 2 minus t2 now the beauty is what is t3 plus t1 by 2 t3 plus t1 is the temperature at these two adjacent points and t3 plus t1 by 2 is the average of the temperature of two adjacent points so it is nothing but average value of the adjacent point suppose we are looking at this particular point with respect to this particular point this particular quantity is nothing but the average of these two adjacent points and then we are negating it with the temperature of the point we are observing for this case it is this much and for this case this is this much so initially let us try to understand this now this difference difference of average and its own temperature is equated with rate of change of temperature with respect to time so delta delta is nothing but how much temperature is changing if i change the time say we are proceeding towards time axis we are going from one second to two seconds how much temperature is varying that will be proportional to this difference difference of average and the own temperature so this is what the mathematical or physical significance of this unsteady heat equation so if you have more difference of this difference of average and its own temperature that means heat will flow faster and if you have this difference very less then heat will flow very slow and what if this becomes zero then there will be no heat flow and it will become a steady state equation so this is the physical significance now let us try to understand in more detail so this particular case now what is happening this t2 has higher temperature compared to both adjacent point so from the basic understanding what do we know if it has higher temperature then heat will flow from this point to that point obviously it will also flow from this point to that one because this is also lower than this so what is happening heat is continuously being flown from this to this and also from this to this so what will ha what will happen this particular temperature will rise up this will also rise up and this will go down and this phenomenon will happen until the difference of these two locations that is the left hand side and right hand side becomes equal now another important thing whether similar amount of heat will flow from this to this and this to this no you can see the gradient is higher here because the difference is higher here so much of heat will be flown from this point to that than the amount of heat which is being flown from this point to that 
So it is the difference which will govern the amount of heat flow. Similarly, if we look at here, this particular point has lower temperature compared to both the adjacent points. So intuition says what? Those two points have higher temperature. So heat will come from these points to here and heat will also come from this point to here. Now, which one has higher difference? So right hand side has higher difference. So heat will come at much faster rate from this point to that point compared to what it is coming from this point to that point. And it will go on until the difference between, I mean difference at both the sides are becoming equal. So I guess I have talked much about this physical significance and how exactly, what exactly the equation signify. In the next lecture, we'll be taking the Comsol multiphysics, we'll solve the equation, we'll plot all the curves, we'll see how the temperature is varying spatially with respect to time, how much time it is taking in order to reach the steady state and whatever I have explained here, will justify it with Comsol simulation that the heat is flowing until these two differences are becoming equal. So we'll be plotting everything so that our concept of unsteady heat conduction equation becomes clear. So I, I hope this video was helpful. If it is so, please do comment. If you comment, then I will get motivation to make further videos. And obviously, I will request you to subscribe to my channel for more updates. We are working with Comsol, we are working with engineering mathematics. Uh, we have also started a series on Python. I hope those things will be helpful to you. Thank you.